If I could use one word to describe last year's West Virginia football team, funny. Not funny as in ha-ha, but funny as in ironic. I mean, look at the calendar last year, okay, and tell me if you see a pattern. September, they won every game. October, they lost every game. November, they won every game. And in December, they lost their only game. And in January, the bowl game against Arizona State, West Virginia won. And so, like I said, see a pattern right there? Consistency? Yeah, this team really didn't have it. In fact, you know, where's the consistency been for West Virginia since joining the Big 12 back in 2012, okay? Yes, I know the Mountaineers have been a good team, okay? But have they been a Big 12 contender? No, no, not once since they joined the league. Dana Holgerson last year avoided the hot seat with the team, you know, finishing strong, getting an 8-5 and five record. But he knows that if they play mediocre football this time around, it could be the end in Morgantown for Dana. Well, this year, offensively, I think Holgerson's team has a shot. And, of course, quarterback Skyler Howard, we saw a year ago him be very productive with 26 touchdown passes over 3,000 yards through the air. Of course, the interceptions have to be significantly decreased because he had too many at 14. But a guy that definitely knows how to throw the ball in tight spots, especially on out routes, Skyler Howard will have a group of receivers that are pretty balanced. And that's bad news if you're an opposing defense because really you can't just focus on one guy or two. You got to focus on all of them. That does include uh, Dekeel Shorts, who is a touchdown maker, but also to Sheldon Gibson at the wideout. He comes back. And also to Jovan Durant, um, a guy that uh, can definitely get past corners. Um, this is a very talented and experienced group of receivers. And West Virginia, again, should have a, a terrific passing attack. But can the running game... Can the running game continue to be effective? It was last year. Russell Sherrill, the one-time five-star recruit, of course, played at Pittsburgh for the Panthers. And we're waiting to see if he can hit his full potential in Morgantown for WVU. And it looks like he will be uh, the number one guy uh, this year. Now, a guy that could really help the Mountaineers a lot, a true freshman in Kennedy McCoy. Now, McCoy did get involved in spring football, and the coaches were not only impressed with his ability, but also to his knowledge of the offense. The fact that he has definitely learned the playbook at a pretty rapid pace, and I think that's going to be essential for him to get an adequate amount of touches. And if that's the case, the West Virginia's ground game uh, should help keep the Mountaineers a two-dimensional attack. Now, offensive line, they return everybody but the left tackle. We're talking about, you know, Tyler Olaski is probably the best of the bunch. Up front, he's the center. And, of course, don't forget about um, you know, Marcel uh, Lazard at right tackle. The Mountaineer defense didn't do too shabby in 2015. I mean, they were second in the Big 12 in scoring D, giving up under 25 points per game, but also number one in rush D, allowing under 160 yards on the ground for contest. Two of the three up front, remember the Mountaineers will play a 3-3-5 alignment, are back. Both defensive ends, and that will include Noble Washtaku, who had eight and a half sacks a year ago. Led the team. Other side, guy with experience back as well, will be Christian Brown. It's good news. Now, the bad news, even though I know the Mountaineers will play a lot of juniors and seniors who played some, nearly all of them, we're not full-time starters, and that could have a big impact, okay? And that includes all three of the linebackers. So you got some guys who played, but, again, as far as playing time, not as much as the guys ahead of them, of course. We're talking about, you know, Sean Walters Jr., who will now be a new starter at one linebacker, and also, to Xavier Preston at another uh, linebacker. Secondary, though, takes the biggest hit because the secondary was such an impactful part of this team, being able to force turnovers and come up with big hits. You know, it's going to be hard to replicate what guys like, you know, Daryl Worley and, of course, Carl Joseph did, as well as uh, K.J. Dillon. Another big loss for West Virginia just occurred a few weeks ago. A guy that they were counting on in the secondary, uh, Draven Askew Henry, a guy that uh, was the leading returning tackler for the team with 59 stops. Injures his knee, gone for the season. So as if he didn't have enough to worry about for the Mountaineers. In terms of uh, defensive players not back, well, one that you thought you would have back, season-ending injury. So you really have to feel for Mr. Henry. The only full-time starter as far as the secondary, 
Um, that's going to be the uh, back safety, and that is uh, Jared Harper. One guy that uh, Daniel Holgerson hopes they can help on the defensive side is a JUCO transfer, Kajer White, who will play the spur position. Breaking down the Mountaineer schedule, the non-conference part, not that bad. In fact, the toughest game outside the Big 12 appears to be BYU, but that's home slanted for the Mountaineers playing at Landover, Maryland, home of the Washington Redskins. The first true road game for WBU in Lubbock against high-scoring Texas Tech, so the Mountaineers got to watch it. Joe Wickline, the new offensive coordinator of West Virginia, here's some irony for you. Road games against Oklahoma State and Texas, two teams that he was an assistant coach for. How about that? Good news for the Mountaineers, they get home games against Baylor, Oklahoma, and TCU. Three very difficult games. This will be a good Mountaineer offense, but a defense that lost most of its starters. That's going to be a lot to overcome. I think eight wins is where West Virginia will finish. Will Dana Holgerson be back? Well, let me put it this way. I'm glad that I am not an athletic director who has to make that call.